Hello and welcome. So you want to be an SSCP? Well, boy, have I got a show for you. If you're going to join us and go through the certification journey with our SSCP material, you're going to want to know a little bit about what you're going to encounter, what we're going to do, how we're going to do it. So I thought it would be good if we spent just a couple of minutes as we get started giving you the answers to those questions. Join me here, if you will. The path to certification begins, as all good journeys do, with the first of several steps. And we're on the ISC Squared website. I thought it would be good to really launch our discussion here because who better to get the information from than the people who are actually behind the certification. So if you are thinking about being an SSCP and you're not familiar with the fact that ISC Squared is a certification body behind the certification, good to know, good to be aware of. We're talking about who really should earn the SSCP. And as you can see, there's a number of different either occupations or pastimes, depending on how serious you take IT, that you may want to be involved with, being a network security engineer, being a systems administrator, a systems or security analyst. All sorts of people have the background to achieve this certification. The question is whether you do or not. And if you don't, rest assured, going through our show, looking at all the episodes, spending time with me and my co-hosts as we talk about the topics will certainly position you to be successful. But there is an experiential component. I'm going to point that out to you in just a moment and make sure that you are aware of the requirement there. So if you are in IT currently, if you spend time dealing with uh, any of or multiples of the seven domains that the knowledge base is going to encompass, definitely a good opportunity for you. What are those seven domains, you ask? And what do you need to know to pass the exam? Well, we can see right here, in no particular order, we'll simply go through them as listed on the website. Domain one, we focus on access controls. How do we deal with and understand the use of access controls, both in the implementation as well as in the theoretical, uh, the logical design, the management, the architecture elements, and all things related to that. How do we deal with in domain two, security operations and administration? This is the day-to-day, moment-to-moment minutia of IT administration, of IT monitoring, of IT oversight, and really all the activities that as IT professionals interested in and focused on security, we have to engage in day to day. How do we deal with risk, identifying risk, monitoring and analyzing, applying controls and countermeasures, and trying to minimize the impact of risk in the organization is the subject of domain three. In domain four, incident response and recovery, when bad things do happen, because despite our best efforts, they do on occasion occur, how are we going to gather ourselves up and respond to those incidents and ensure we understand the who, what, when, where, why, and how of exactly what went on. We're gonna deal with all that in domain four. Domain five tends to send shutters down the spines of most IT professionals, but fear not. We will make your journey through cryptography as relatively pain-free and as interesting as we can. Believe it or not, we do have to know about cryptography and that can scare some people looking to certify What am I going to have to know? Is there a lot of math? Do I have to worry about all these crazy algorithms and things that I may not have any background with because I just don't deal with cryptography on a regular basis? None of that's going to be a problem. Very little to any math at all. Yes, there are a bunch of algorithms, but we're going to break them down for you, make them relatively straightforward and easy to remember. We're going to have some fun along the way. Uh, Networking and communication security in domain six. That is an area most of you probably have a background with already. Most IT professionals go through this kind of a knowledge base for this kind of an exam, bringing to the table knowledge from firsthand experience day to day in their jobs of things associated with networking and with communication security. So that's usually a comfort area for most of us, and it will certainly be treated as such here. But we're still going to have to talk about the OSI model, among other things. So obviously a little bit of theory combined with a lot of practical real-world discussions about how we do things and a little bit of older technology we just have to know about because somebody wrote a question and said, you got to know. We'll talk about all that, and hopefully with all that, you'll certainly be able to get through that domain with no trouble. And then finally, in domain seven, systems and application security. Uh, Sounds on the surface like maybe we're dealing with writing applications and things like that. Not really, although we do talk about uh, the SDLC, the system or software development lifecycle, and how we can apply that to development activities to try to formalize them and ultimately make them more secure. But we talk about things like malware and malicious code. We talk about virtualized networking and software-defined networking and cloud systems and services in this domain. So a lot of stuff that may not appear on the surface based on the domain name to be there and actually be important for us to consider. A lot of really interesting stuff and stuff that certainly you do want to make sure you are familiar with. All right, with regards to how we actually get certified, I mentioned that there is an experiential component, 
And I'm, by the way, just clicking on the number of tiles as we go so you can easily keep up with me and see what is going on here. To qualify for this certification, you must have not only the ability to pass the exam, so clearly study, take the exam, be successful and pass it, but you have to have at least one year of cumulative paid work experience in one or more of the seven domains. Now, what does that really mean? Well, that means you have to demonstrate through some sort of process of vetting and checking your references and uh, your credentials and things like that. So you submit either a letter of reference from an employer or you submit a CV or a uh, document that dictates and shows your work experience, and then we can prove that through references and things like that. You'll submit that as part of the application process for taking the exam and then afterwards what's called the vetting process to actually go through uh, and be granted the credential by ISC Squared. Uh, you have to show that you work in an area where you do things like this on a regular and consistent basis. But don't let that really scare you. Most IT professionals can easily prove that they have one or more years of experience in one or more of the domains that make up the SSC PCBK. You just have to make sure that you're able to show that and document that in your resume or in your CV when you submit it. And if you're not sure about that, by the way, talk to a peer or a colleague that perhaps has gone through the certification process and can show you what they did to submit and show their experience. And as long as you're roughly aligned with the domain names and the kind of detail that the domain covers, you should be fine. A little hint for you there. If on your resume or on your list of qualifications, you use the same keywords that are in the domain and in the subtopics, it's very easy for somebody to pick those out and see that you've done not simply IT administration, but you've actually dealt with uh, perhaps network and communication security for the last two years, which is a great way to show your experience, but to be more specific and use the keywords that ISC Squared may be looking for. In our show, we will go through all of the seven domains in detail. We will break them down and talk about all the subtopics that make them up. It will be very interesting and a great experience for you. And we're looking forward to spending time with you, myself and my co-hosts who will be with us throughout the journey. But you gotta do one very important thing before we get started. You gotta stop watching me here and start watching me over there in the show. So get to it. I'll be waiting for you. We'll see you soon.